Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are finally doing this video for you guys. Uh, in regards to the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction that we're going to be experiencing on December the 21st and how this is going to affect your sign depending on the placements. Uh, so very quick rundown in regards to this major transformation that we're entering for 2021. <clears throat> I'm sure if you guys have been following me for a while, you guys seen the uh, Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in Capricorn. Um, the difference here is that uh, Jupiter and Saturn are the biggest planets of the system, right? Of the solar system um, in regards to, aside from the sun, I should say. Uh, so it takes roughly about 20 to 30 years for it to go into every single sign. Um, now the Jupiter and Saturn conjunctions have been happening in all Earth energy signs. And Finally, we're going into, from Capricorn, we're going into Aquarian energy. So what does that mean? That means that we're transitioning not only that transformative energy that Saturn and Jupiter bring, but we're also entering a new element. That never happens other than every other 200 years or so. Um, so if we look back at history, you would see around the time of the Renaissance and the paintings and poetry and all of that that has to do with creativity, with emotional connection, people traveling through boats, of course, the element of water. Then we move forward into Jupiter-Saturn conjunctioning in the fire elements. That's when we dealt with war, with a lot of colonization, with taking power uh, through force of aggression. That's the fire energy. Uh, then we move forward to the 1800s up until now where we've been dealing with nothing but earth energy. So that's the, uh, you know, the major uh, expansion of businesses, of growth, of uh, everything that has to do with earth's resources and building more than anything. Uh, the, you know, machinery, all of this uh, we've been experiencing from the 1800s up until now. And finally... We are where we're at right now, going or getting ready to dip our toes into Aquarian energy. This is the Aquarian era, the element uh, transitioning from earth element to air element. Uh, major transformative energy here. Um, as you guys know, we've been experiencing a lot of uh, chaotic type of energy. Uh, that's the shadow side of earth taking power by force. Um, and more than anything, it has to do with controlling. So it's been... Uh, the shadow side, you know, revealing itself of people trying to control other people or governments trying to control the masses, etc. Uh, so again, we're going into this healing energy, you know, Aquarius is all about humanity. It's all about the betterment of other people and, you know, empathy starts to kick in. This is bringing a lot of healing energy. Uh, a lot of expansion in regards to science, in regards to the future, in regards to uh looking into uh, the coming 10 to uh, 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, so again, a lot of people changing careers, others um, no longer working nine to five jobs, but working from home. Uh, this could, you know, there is a transition that's happening where we're going into this era of uh, not only self-independence, but uh, as well as companies understanding that, you know, there's certain things that people can do from home uh, that becomes much better beneficial for them in some shape, way, or form, as well as for you. So again, very transformative energy. How is this going to affect you, Gemini? Well, uh, your energy and focus will go towards and directly towards love and romance. Yes, my lovelies, it's about time. <laughs> A lot of you guys working through partnerships, if you've been dealing with a, if you've been in a committal relationship where there's been a lot of testing, a lot of going through difficulties and overcoming obstacles, um, you're going to be going into this energy of wanting to work through uh, those underlying issues in regards to the relationship. Why? Because it's going to empower and deepen this connection as well as stabilize it and create some type of longevity there. Uh, with Saturn's energy. Saturn, remember you guys, when you think of Saturn, think of Father Time, 
Think of only stability. It is not something temporary. It's something that is going to be long lasting. So again, partnerships, uh, the building of new foundations or new relationships that are going to really affect you for the next coming years, as well as for those that are in a relationship, it's about rebuilding on a, sol a solid foundation. So again, the deepening of that connection. Um, Saturn and Jupiter are going to be taking place in your ninth house. So what does this mean? Um, this means that it's going to be very beneficial for your career as well, uh, Gemini. For a lot of you guys, finding jobs that uh, you're really passionate about or finding positions that you are willing to put that extra work because you enjoy doing what you're doing. And this is creating this type of not only financial stability, but purpose behind it. So very highlighted there for you guys. Uh, this can also represent getting opportunities at work where you're currently working at, where it's going to be more beneficial for you. Um, also, uh, what they're saying here, it's going to be important for you to be aware that there's going to be a conflict arising in your social circle. So this, when I say social circle, it usually indicates people that you choose to be around. This could be friends, colleagues, um, relatives, people that you enjoy spending time with. There's going to be a situation that arises where there's going to be some type of conflict. This could be, and I feel that for some of you guys, this is more to do with outside energy, meaning it's not directly impacting you, but it's going to impact the the social circle that you have. So it could be like friends bickering with other friends and you standing by or, you know, stepping to the side and being like, oh, I don't want to have nothing to do with this. Um, but it's definitely going to impact that. But this is a positive thing because for some of you guys, you've outgrown these type of connections. There is new connections that are being built that are going to be long lasting. And for some of you guys, these are friendships that are going to be built that are going to affect you for the next coming seven years. So again, uh, yes, there's going to be some disconnection with uh, current friends, but at the same time, you've probably outgrown them and you have new friends coming in or new connections coming in that are going to be beneficial for you. Uh, also, um, let's see, where am I? Need to be attentive towards children as well. Your fifth house is going to be activated as well. So what does this mean? This means that for some of you guys, it could be that you experience um, almost situations that are in connection with children. For some of you that are single and don't have kids, you may be thinking about or wondering, maybe even something you've never thought about in the past of creating your own family or wanting or having the need uh, something in connection with children or wanting to have kids, that type of energy. Uh, be mindful if you do have children because I feel that this situation that arises may actually be in connection with uh, having the need to be supportive towards your children. So it, it could come off in many different aspects, many different ways. It could be health issues, uh, not necessarily deep health issues, but uh, just something that needs to be taken care of that is going to draw you in closer or create a stronger bond between you and your children. Um, also, um, like I said, for those of you guys that don't have kids, you may be thinking about or wanting to start a new family. Um, spiritual growth is very highlighted here for a lot of you guys, as well as uh, reconnection or healing in regards to family or family dynamics. Uh, this could be your siblings, this could be your parents, this could be, uh, you know, even the partner, or sorry, the family of your partner, uh, if there's certain people you just don't get along with. Uh, throughout the year, you're going to be put in situations where the opportunity arises to heal or to let go of certain type of anger or regret or resentment that you've been holding on to. And it's necessary for you to address that so that you can be able to release yourself from that type of karma. Um, and other than that, seeking deeper truths, uh, need to connect with your spiritual side. Um, this is, I feel that for a lot of you guys, you may already be experiencing this. Um, it's almost like, uh, it's like your soul having the need or waking up and having the need for a higher purpose. A lot of you guys finding spiritual paths, uh, connecting on a spiritual level, or for some of you guys, 
if you're already like part of a religion or some type of belief, it's just you seeking more knowledge and becoming wiser, or connecting deeper on a deeper level with your spiritual side. All right, my lovely. So that's what's coming towards you for no, uh, not November, for uh, the beginning of 2021. Now I'm going to be pulling out 12 cards to represent all 12 months. And this is what's going to be unfolding on each single month, okay? So let's see what spirit has for you guys. Spirits, what are the messages for Geminis? Please give me 12 sets of cards to represent all 12 months of 2021. What can they expect? What new beginnings? What opportunities or challenges may arise for Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising? Sun, Moon, and Rising. Gemini, okay. All right, so that is January, February, March, April, May, June, July. Also, you guys, if you guys enjoy these types of readings, this is the second year I do it. Definitely comment and um, comment below, share and like these videos uh, so that you can help grow our channel as well as let me know that you guys enjoy this so I can integrate this every end of the year uh, so we can see what's to come for the next coming year. Um, feedback is greatly appreciated, you guys. And necessary. <laughs> All right, my lovelies. So for January, Geminis, you have the Ten of Wands and the Three of Pentacles. So a lot of stress, a lot of worries in regards to, again, I feel very heavily for some of you guys, the beginning of January, uh, you may be dealing with a situation that has to do with your social circle. These are friends. These are people that you spend time with. There is a situation that is creating a lot of stress for you or feeling like you have to kind of make a choice or side with someone. Uh, for the month of January and what they're telling you here is drop that stress or drop those worries that do not even belong to you try not to try to like try the best you can not to take on other people's problems Gemini let's focus on you and worry about you before we can jump into anyone else I feel that January is going to be uh, testing you uh, to see if you are learning to put yourself first and um, maybe for some of you guys learning to stick out of other people's businesses, not in a negative way, but yes, in a negative way. I hope you know what I mean. So take it for what it is. Now for the month of February, you have the devil card here with the 10 of swords. So there's definitely a cutting of links, an ending of some type of connection. For some of you guys, this could be a friend, this could be a relative, or uh, this can also represent partnerships, um, a toxic environment. Uh, the devil card is all to do with bondage, and this is you releasing yourself from that type of bondage. It could be an emotional bondage. It could be a person that is very manipulative um, or that they only see things from their perspective and they're not really compassionate um, about even worrying how you view the situation. So this is you in February taking your power back. This is you no longer allowing people to manipulate you or no longer allowing people to take advantage of your good heart, Gemini. And uh, again, I feel that it's going to be very important for you to learn to put yourself first um, or to not self-sacrifice at the, you know, self-sacrifice making other people happy at the expense of your happiness is what they're saying. Now for the month of March here, we have the Six of Swords and the Queen of Cups. This is you finding your emotional balance. This is you being able to move um, or walk towards a new beginning without no longer carrying chains of your past. I feel January and February is going to be very heavily karmic connected. Remember, Saturn is a karma planet. So I feel that you are dealing with those situations because there's a karmic cycle ending by March you're going to be more emotionally stable. You're going to be more emotionally in control of your emotions. And you're going to be emotionally available to open up or to connect uh, to people with a higher vibration or walking towards a new opportunity. For some of you guys, this could be um, 
getting ready or being prepared, something within you on a subconscious level is telling you it's time to uh, keep pushing. Gemini, it's time to take it to the next level in life. Uh, a lot of growth and maturity in the month of March for you guys. And almost like a feeling of like, yes, I've learned my lessons and being able to grow out of that circle so you don't continue repeating the same cycles. Now for the month, the month here of April, uh, you have the Eight of Swords and the Nine of Pentacles. So this could be restrictions in regards to your finances or feeling uh, like there is an unexpected uh, expense that you may have to be dealing with in the month of April. Uh, for some of you guys, this could be some type of restoration in regards to your home life uh, or your home. This could be like, um, I don't know, something breaking or having to restore it. Um, it's an un unexpected expense, but it's in a positive because you're dealing with it now. So it doesn't turn into something more expensive. Uh, for others of you, this could just be like really being in your head about, um, career, about the path that you want to take or the financial freedom that you're looking for. For some of you guys, this could just be you deliberating exactly what it is that you want to do, especially for those of you guys that are starting or trying to get a business off the ground. Now, for the month of May here, we have the Magician and Three of Cups. There's a celebratory type of energy. For some of you guys, uh, May is bringing to you um, a higher raise. For some of you guys, a higher authority or authoritative type of uh, uh position that is being offered to you there is something that is manifesting for you in the month of may uh for some of you guys this could be in connection with finances uh, i'm hearing raises i'm hearing um bigger pay um and it's not so much of taking on more responsibility it's just an opportunity that arises for you now for others of you this could be uh that around the month of may you meet a person they could be aries type of energy or it could be a water energy uh, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces type of energy uh, where you may meet this individual through other friends or people that are around you that introduce you to this person. Um, with the Magician and the Three of Cups, this is like really reminding me almost of like starting to experience good things in your life where you kind of stop and question like, is this too good to be true? <laughs> that type of energy try not to get in that state of mind. If you're doing good, look up, say thank you, universe, thank you, spirit guides for blessing me and guiding me and continue to give me these blessings so that I may continuously keep flourishing in this bountiful type of energy instead of doubting yourself, okay? Now for the month of June, we have the Empress card here and the Four of Swords. Some of you guys taking vacation in the month of June. Um, <clears throat> for others of you taking some type of retreat, this could be a spiritual retreat. This could just be that you are physically exhausted and there is a need for you uh, to kind of sit back or to take some time off of work in the month of June. I feel travel is um, highlighted here as well. I feel that you guys will be given the opportunity either to vacation or this could be like a situation where uh, there is travel that is needed in regards to business, in regards to what you do for a living. Um, but this is actually something that is kind of synchronizing because your body needs that type of rest. So positive thing there. Now for the month of July, we have here the moon card and the four of cups. You may be challenged in the month of July emotionally. I feel that for some of you guys, this is like dwelling in the past or revisiting the past. This could be a person popping out from the past, trying to rekindle something where um, at some point in your life, you kind of wanted it to happen. You wanted it to manifest. Now that it's manifesting, it's like you're unsure. I feel that you've outgrown this situation, Gemini. So if it is an ex or a person from your past, walk away from this. Don't entertain it because I feel that it's really going to drain your energy. Not only that, but it's kind of like we go back to that of cycles. And uh, part of 2021 for you guys is not to be repeating the same cycle. So um, walking away from anything that just didn't pan out in this year. It's not going to pan out in 2021, okay? We're talking about partnerships, so walk away from that if you are being tested. Now, for the month of August, we have here the High Priestess and the Emperor card. Powerful, powerful cards of manifestation, Gemini. 
I feel that for the month of August, you guys are going to be having the opportunity to manifest that that you're really connecting on a very deep level. For some of you guys, this is higher learning. For others of you, this is researching, finding new information or expanding uh, the way you view things or the way you view life. For others of you, structure is coming through. Maybe you've never experienced this type of financial stability that's going to be unfolding for you for 2021. And I feel that you guys are being illuminated or being guided. For some of you guys being very intuitively savvy when it comes to money. Uh, this could be you uh, listening to your intuition and making decisions or finance, financial decisions, uh, even investments uh, that are really going to multiply what you're investing. So this is a perfect time uh, for investments as well as for trying your luck as well because they're saying a lot of financial stability coming in for you for this month. Now for the month of, what was this? July, August, September, sorry. September, transformative energy. We have the chariot here and the eight of cups. I see you guys walking or running literally towards an opportunity that's coming towards you. This could be a cancer type of energy coming through for you. For others, water energy, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. But I feel that you guys have been dealing with this energy throughout the year of 2021. Finally, there's a manifestation or there's an opportunity to stabilize uh, or to build something on a solid foundation. And this is you really going towards the light that is being shined on you or going towards the mat the materialization that is unfolding before you. Don't question partnerships around this time. I feel that for some of you guys, it's like it's something to do with your past or it's something to do with what you've been through in the past that your insecurities start to come up around this time. And we're talking about... Uh, September. And what they're saying here is don't continue on that cycle. There is something that you need to address when we're talking about partnerships and relationships. They have a tendency of doing. You should learn by now. Uh, if you find yourself being challenged in regards to love and romance around this time, take a step back and get out of your head, Gemini, so you don't fuck up, okay? Very important because I feel that you guys are very tempted into going back into an old pattern or old behavior. And what they're telling you is you need to outgrow this. Now for the month of October, we have here the Five of Swords and the Two of Pentacles. Some of you guys being challenged. Uh, this could be dealing with friends or relatives where ego is highly involved here. And I feel that their initial intent is to throw you off or to distract you. Uh, so don't allow people to get the best of you or to get you out of your own character. Don't be petty in this month. Very important because this can really uh, create instability when we're trying to clear out karmic energy. So again, don't be petty for this month of October uh, because this can come back around and bite you in the ass. So just be careful with that. Now for the month of November, beautiful, beautiful beautiful energy four of wands and the wheel of the year this is striking luck this is growth this is stabilizing some type of relationship taking it to the next level a commitment and engagement is coming through for some of you for others of you uh, this is really striking luck in regards to if you've been trying throughout the year to try to find a home some type of property this is finding the perfect house you've wanted or you've been trying to get for quite a while. For others of you, this is, again, commitment coming through, especially those of you guys that are coming out of a very toxic cycle. So very beautiful energy, Gemini. And finally, we're ending the year in December 2021 with the Seven of Wands and the Knight of Wands. This is you knowing your power, Gemini. This is you knowing your truth. This is you acknowledging your self-worth. This is you just being empowered and saying, you know what? I'm not going to deal with this type of nonsense. And if you're bringing nonsense to my life, there's the fucking door. This is you taking power. Um, not only that, but this is like genuinely believing in yourself and your confidence being off the roof in a positive way, not in an egotistical type of way, but more to do with like no longer allowing people to walk all over you 
or no longer allowing people to take advantage of you. Um, this is you ending the year with the bang is what they're saying. Um, for a lot of you guys, this is around the time that you step back and really analyze the journey that you've been going through and that you've been tested. This is people realizing in the month of December that they kind of, sort of, um, they kind of sort of like didn't really give you credit for certain things and them sitting back and being like wow gemini is really fucking doing it like that type of energy uh for others of you this could just be a representation of people around you being a little bit envious or jealous uh just be guarded you know don't let people know your every move gemini and I know some of you guys have a tendency of having difficulty with that because you are a communicative energy, right? It's all about community and communicating and just getting your ideas across. Uh, but what they're telling you here is in the month of December, it's important to maintain certain things that we haven't fully manifested to ourselves. Uh, so you don't allow other people to throw negative energy into what you're going towards. So uh, be mindful about that. All right, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed these predictions. I hope that this gives you insight. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed these videos. Like I said, let me know in the comments below if you enjoy and you want to see this every end of the year. I wish you guys the very best. Best of luck. And uh, let's kick off this new year to a new start. A beautiful, beautiful outlook for you guys. I send you guys all my love. Happy holidays. And we'll see each other soon. Bye.